La mayoría de las piezas que escogimos eh, tiene un significado cosmológico, o sea, eh, sea por su eh, esencia material, sea por la posición en la cual se, se ofrendó, eh, tiene significado eh, o en un mito o en el concepto del espacio y el tiempo de los mayas. Entonces es como leer un texto cuando, cuando estamos encontrando estas piezas en la tierra, enterradas con otras piezas y estamos leyendo todo un mensaje que los mayas dejaron enterrado hace mil o dos mil años. Through archaeology and studies of modern day Maya, um, there are certain ideas that we know about the Maya worldview. The Maya had concepts sort of similar to ours called chulel, and that's the idea of a soul. There's a clear association that the Maya were making between jade and an essence um, that permeated them all the way through to their core. Jade es, es la, el material más eh, precioso que tenían los mayas, es más precioso que el oro. El jade tiene un significado especial porque es la piedra más dura que hay y tiene una luminosidad eh, y una, un brillo que ninguna otra piedra eh, puede tener. Entonces los mayas la, la adoptaron como símbolo de muchas cosas. Es símbolo de la mazorca de maíz y del dios del maíz. Ese es uno de los dioses más importantes que hay. Jade's development in Maya culture as an element that nobles and royals used to help them defeat death and attain this Im immortal status is very uniquely Maya and it's something that we thought was a wonderful theme to permeate through this exhibition. In the introduction to the exhibition, we wanted to feature a couple of pieces just to show some of the uh, beautiful sculptural achievements of the Maya. This piece would have decorated a building. And what's interesting about it is that we can see this individual is actually wearing a headband that would have been made of jade. And this was an important symbol of royal authority. Uh, this little piece is one of the key pieces of the exhibition. It's small, but it's newly discovered, and it was in fact discovered by my uh, co-curator, Francisco Estrada Belli, and it dates to maybe eight or 900 BC. It shows us uh, one of the earliest depictions of a Maya by the Maya. The features that the figurine has begin to show us some of the important ideas that the Mayas had and one of those is you can see that it has cranial deformation that's flattened in the back. Another is that it has a slightly crossed eyes which emerged as a sort of an idea of beauty, particularly of male beauty. It also may represent the corn god which was a founding central figure for the Maya and we're going to talk about the corn god's role as we move throughout the exhibition. The object we have here is a very small figure made of jade, and it's also a very old figure. It dates to perhaps 1000 BC. One of the important things about it is that if you look carefully at the features on the face, you see that they don't really look typically Mayan, and that's because it has a lot of influence in it from the, the Olmec culture. Um, the Olmecs were one of the first Mesoamerican cultures, civilizations. But the fascinating thing about this object is that it was found in a tomb at the archaeological site of Huaca, which is in Guatemala. 
but it was a tomb that dates to 600 AD. So that's almost 2,000 years perhaps after it was first manufactured. It's fascinating to think about what the history of this piece might have been, where it might have been all that time. This offering is from Saval, and it was excavated by Francisco Stradabelli. Um, it dates to about 800 BC. And what we think is that this is actually one of the earliest depictions of the Maya idea of world creation and the role that the Tree of Life played in Maya culture. What we have is the placement of this jade axe um, symbolizing sort of the, the seed, maize seeds or corn seeds. On the next level, we, a lot of these jade pebbles sort of symbolize the primordial sea that the world came from. And the other jade axes, again, helping symbolize the four cardinal directions and the four trees, the four other trees. And at the upper level, the vessels here probably would have been filled with water and ritually smashed during the event that led to the interment of these objects. If they were filled with water and smashed, that brought about this idea of watering the earth and watering these jade seeds so that they could sprout to symbolize the world tree that would have grown out from this offering, the tree that sustained life. We wanted to display it in a way that would lead you to really be able to understand how the interpretation happened that the archaeologists arrived at these ideas. The San Bartolo murals, which was discovered in a temple, is actually a bit of a propaganda piece because what it wants to show us is the association between mortal kings, who is depicted in the, the last panel here, being crowned, receiving the crown, the association that mortal kings have with the maize god and with this important process of acting as the embodiment of the maize god on earth and therefore their central role in sustaining the cosmos. What we see are a series of personal sacrifices where a noble person is offering their blood. We see that paralleled in the kind of objects that we find at Maya sites that would have been used by nobles to carry out these activities. Kings in particular, kings and queens, would perform different kinds of auto-sacrifice and then they would burn the blood as an offering to the gods. This is actually a censer, and it would have probably, it was found in a burial, so it would have been used in burial rites. Something would have been probably burned in it to emit smoke and incense uh, as part of those rituals. This piece is a very interesting piece as well. It's early. Um, it dates to sometime between 1000 and 400 BC. And one of the things that it shows us is the evolution of my ideas about the role of the spirit companion, the why. This is a very old concept, but what we can see here is an individual who's carrying what looks like to be a jaguar. It could be a club in the form of the jaguar, but there's a close association that develops in Maya culture between nobles and rulers and jaguars, jaguars as their spirit companions. Um, jaguars are ferocious beasts, they're the most powerful animal in Mesoamerica, and they also are night hunters, so that's a very um, powerful being to be associated with if you're a ruler.
here we have the classic period depiction of Kawil. Kawil is a lightning god and the patron of royal dynasties. You often see Maya nobles depicted carrying scepters that are depictions of Kawil. And it's actually a diadem that might have been worn in a headdress of a noble. Here in this area, we chose these as really beautiful examples of some of the skill in Maya jade working. Um, a necklace made of cut crystal and jade, a pendant that's carved all the way through, tunneled all the way through to hang on a necklace, and then some examples of Maya ear flares. They would have been quite heavy, but they have a very beautiful shape. In this case, we just wanted to show a little bit the difficulty of working jade. Jade is the hardest stone in Mesoamerica. There's one well-known source of it, which is in the Matagua River Valley in Guatemala. But to work jade was really a very difficult and time-consuming process. You're basically working one stone against another in order to get that polished look that these objects have. <laughs> There are various interpretations about who this represents, but one idea is that it's the jaguar sun god of the underworld. This individual would be very important as an association with nobles who saw the jaguar as their spiritual companion and saw the jaguar as this mythic beast that was involved in this uh, process of going down to the underworld, defeating death, and returning uh, to the world of the living and the world of the divine. This group of figures was found less than 10 years ago at the site of Waka by David Friedel and a team of archaeologists. The way that we've recreated it in the case is exactly the way that they uncovered it in the excavations. Basically what we're looking at is a royal court scene. Everyone in this case has a role to fill in an event that took place probably at Waka. Um, sometime between 6 and 800 AD. This figure of this kneeling person next to this beautiful deer, the deer being the spirit companion, is probably a deceased ancestor and probably the ancestor of the king and or the queen who are represented here. You can see the queen with her fabulous jade necklace and a shield that she's holding. And you can see the king with his very large necklace and a very elaborate headdress. These two likely are trying to communicate with their ancestor. And all of the people in this case are helping achieve that. In the very back on the top, there's a dark figure that represents a shaman. And obviously she would be taking a role of trancing and trying to communicate more directly with the spirit world. Heavenly Jade is a collaborative project and the main actors in the project are the National Museum in Guatemala. Um, which provided all the wonderful objects in the exhibition. Of course, the Ministry of Sport and Culture, which is the custodian of the cultural heritage of Guatemala. And our partner, the Inter-American Development Bank, which provided critical funding not only to bring the exhibition here to Washington, D.C., but also to support conservation efforts on the jade that will be carried out at the National Museum in the coming year. Pues esta exhibición creo que es, es sumamente importante porque trata de restablecer esa conexión eh, entre la cultura maya antigua de hace 3000 años y aquí se ven las primeras manifestaciones de la cosmogonía de los dioses mayas y los mayas de hoy, en los cuales han sido separados de sus propios ancestros y es importante porque los mayas mismos lo van a ver cuando esta eh, exhibición regrese a Guatemala.
Thank you.